Welcome to the R video tutorial on mathematical operations part three. And this is really not mathematical operations, but more standard statistical functions. All right, so let's get started. Uh, oh, by the way, this is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. If you notice up here at the top, I have my header already in here. And if you notice, I keep putting the header up there so that you're aware of what you're working with. And I recommend you always comment things so that you know what you're working with. I'm going to use the vectors that I had in my previous videos, just so we have some consistency across these examples in case you're using the same file one after the other. You don't have to actually retype all of this. You can just copy and paste it. All right, so let's look at some simple functions that are really useful. Uh, first is absolute value. And here it's ABS is the function and if I put in minus seven and I run this I get back seven. Now uh, you can do this with a vector as well. Uh, another popular function is the square root and here it's pretty much standard uh, with all programming languages which is SQR or SQRT and here I can put in a positive number and I will get an answer. If I put in a negative number, I might get an imaginary answer. And you see the square root of 9 is 3. I can also apply these to vectors. So I'm going to do A1 here. And you can see that the answer says A1 isn't found. Why? Because I didn't run it. And that's a common mistake people do is they will not run the whole script. They'll run the piece that they want to and R doesn't see it until it's in its environment. So now if I run the square root of A1, I see here are the square roots of the values that I have put in there. All right. Uh, another common one is logarithms. And there's different versions of log. Uh, so there's version of uh, natural log. There's the log base 10, log base whatever, log base 2 if you like. But here it's log. And what we're going to do is, like, if I put in log 10, we can see that this is log base e by default. It's the natural logarithm. And if I put in a vector, uh, b1, let's say, remember, if you put any number in, it has to be greater than uh, 0, or otherwise it'll scream at you. Uh, and we get the log of the values here. If I really want to change the base, I can put in here question mark log, because what I want you to see is that you can actually change the base on these. Uh, so there's two versions. Here, log is going to be log base. Uh, uh, natural log, log base E is what I would call it. There's log 10, log 2, log 1P as well. So if you're interested in any of those, you can go look them up. I'm going to move on and we're going to use uh, EXP, so exponentiation or the anti-log. Exponents, because I can't type. So EXP. Uh, if we put in exp of 10, and we can run this, and you can see it gives us e to the 10. So that would be, if we put in the comment here, e to the 10, but it doesn't know what e is, so we use exp as the function. And you can apply this to any vector as well. You can see the values down here. Okay, so we have other functions that are built in here. There's like a gamma function. If you know what a gamma function is, you just type in gamma and you put in the value. So gamma of 10. And you can see the gamma of 10 is equal to this value. There are other functions that are useful, such as factorial. And factorial is easy to use. You just type in factorial. And put in the number that you want the factorial of. So let's say I want the fa 6 factorial. I put in factorial and run it. Now on these functions, you have to be a little bit careful because you can easily exceed the machine precision with these because factorials give really big numbers really, really fast. Uh, likewise, a gamma function can as well. You can also do uh, other functions, but like combinations and whatnot, but right now I'm going to leave that out. You can do trig functions. And here you have to remember that trig functions are in radians. So you have to remember pi and all of that. So 
So just keep that in mind when you're working with these. You can't just put in sine of 90 and expect it to be the sine of 90 degrees. You're going to have to put in what it actually is. So, for example, if I put in here sine of 90, you will quickly see that it is not the value that 90 degrees which produce, which is 1. In fact, 90 degrees is actually pi divided by 2. And if I run this, I get the value 1, which is what I'm expecting. So just remember that it's in radians. Uh, this will work on uh, trig functions, or on uh, vectors as well. So I can do sine of a1 times pi. And this is going to be pretty uh, uneventful, because all of these numbers are whole numbers, and they're going to be near 0. But I can do this with cosine as well. So I can do cosine of pi. Uh, divided by 2, and if you're familiar with trig, that this number is very, very close to 0, and I can do the tangent as well. Uh, but I'm not going to do pi over 2, I'm going to do like pi over 4, because we should know what that would be if we know our radians, and we get 1 because that's a 45 degree angle. Uh, so we have sine, cosine, tangent are, is built in here, you will have to use cosecant and cotangent, cotangent, and let's see here, secant are not directly programmed. But if you know about your trig functions, it's pretty easy to do. So there's sine, put cosine here in our, and tangent for those of you who want to use trig functions. All right, so now we have some a handful more of uh, functions that are available for us in R for mathematical operations. So you can go to the next video.